to the left of the steering column. So right in here um, is the traction control off button. Default will be on. And then the dimmer switch for the interior gauges is here. And it has a tilt and telescoping steering column. Use lock in place here. I'm sitting behind the wheel and I am six feet tall and the driver's seat is all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea of the potential legroom. Uh, and it's fantastic. I would actually pull, have to pull up the seat a little bit to drive uh, safely so I can press the brake all the way down and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, lots of legroom. Uh, this right in here doesn't really, it's a little bit, it's a hard surface. Um, so luckily it doesn't, my leg doesn't, you know, bump into it or anything. Even more room on this side. So yeah, all good. Leather wrap steering wheel, feels good, good thickness. And so overall, looking good. And I like the way they have the simplistic design here. So you have the volume for the radio here, change to the tracks. Uh, you also have down here this little dial. It's kind of like a rubberized dial, and that helps uh, make changes here on the screen. We'll get to that in a minute, because there's another one here. So the cruise control is here on the right side. You can turn it on, uh, set, resume, cancel. Pretty straightforward. You have the lane keep assist system, and the uh, with the adaptive cruise control, you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you and just cycle through the distance that you want and just rest on the one you want. It does have the pedal shifters as well. Um, since it doesn't have gears, it's more like a speed the speed ratio. You know, you're able to have some control over the speed ratio. Windshield wiper controls are here. Turn signals on this side, but it also has the headlight switch. So you can toggle off the headlights here, toggle back on to automatic, and then you have parking and then headlights on. The gauge cluster is basically just a big screen. It does have some fixed gauges here. So this is the uh, battery percentage here, and this is the fuel tank right here. Um, but here in the center, it has a digital speedometer. It has the regular speedometer here on a screen, so it's kind of like digitally represented. Over here, you have the status of the power of the vehicle. So as you're uh, using electricity and using power, it'll go up. As you're slowing down or going downhill or coasting, it's gonna go down here showing that it's recharging the battery. So using the battery, recharging the battery. Uh, so as you drive, you can keep an, eye, keep an eye on that. Excellent, hit the horn. <laughs> Um, so you can keep it on that if you want to. So you can customize the screen. So here on the left side, this little dial right here, let's scroll up and down. So this gives you your different audio sources. And then you can select the, the one that you want. And you can also customize this side of the display. So you can show and hide certain audio sources that you don't want uh, to use. So right now they're all check marked. Uh, you can also go right there. Uh, to have this on or off. So if you want this off, you can go there and it just shows that. So there's nothing on the side now. All right, so this side has a little dial and we can customize this as well. Uh, so right now, it's in maintenance mode because the vehicle just got off the truck. You can see it has two miles on it. Um, so let's go right here. So this is, shows the status of the, the energy monitor. So where the, the, the power is coming from, whether it's coming from the engine, the battery, um, or the wheels actually, because you're coasting and it, the power regens the uh, regenerates the electricity. So as you're as you're driving, it'll show up right here. Uh, the next one shows your range and your average fuel economy and stuff like that, which is all skewed right now because the vehicle hasn't been driven. Uh, average speed and all that stuff will show up here. You have a navigation compass. Uh, then you have the attention level, status of the seat belts, uh, maintenance. Safety, safety and support system, which you can go in and turn on or off features if you need to. They're all turned on now. And then you can choose no content if you want. Um, if you just land on this and just don't do anything, it'll just go away. You see that. Um, so let's go back here to customize display. And you can show and hide different things. Like there's some stuff you don't want to have in that, that list. We can uncheck them. Right now they're all checked. Uh, but you can also customize this, this display. Let's go back here and let's go to gauge design. This is kind of neat because we, we've been looking at it in the round view. Let's go to bar view. Gives us that view. So it just have bars on the side. Round minimal has less stuff and also um, they'll even hide when the cruise control is active. And then you have bar minimal. Same thing where it has less stuff and then the bars will disappear when the cruise control is active. Kind of neat. Let's go back there and let's go back to the round because that's pretty pretty standard. Most people get, are familiar with this view right here. 
So looking at the touch screen, it has physical buttons here on the side. It has a physical volume knob to enter the stations, a back button, and a home button. Uh, you have the volume knob which you can press in and mute the audio as well. Now there's these little sh shortcuts here on the very side, as well as these little tile icons here on the main screen. And we can customize these if we want to. Um, so we can press and hold this, and it pops up this menu. And basically what we can do is choose the one we want to edit. So we choose this one, and we'll change that to the clock. And let's choose this one and change it to, uh, let's see here, power flow. All right, now we can edit home. Uh, so if we want to edit any of these, we could do that. So if we want to go to AM, we can hide that since we don't want to use it. Uh, and then we hit the back button to get out of there. So we can customize both the shortcuts here on the left side as well as the main tiles uh, if we want to have that. And I like the way it has a digital clock here as well. It's always there and it's large, easy to read. You can see right where you glance at it while you're driving. Let's look at the uh, Google Maps because this has the Google built in. So it has the full Google Map system where you can do searches and all that stuff as well. You have different settings. It has the voice recognition, all that stuff. Look at a digital clock here, which is pretty cool. Different clock faces. I like that one because it has the date. You can look at the power flow as well here. Very similar to what we saw on the other screen, but more, more bigger and more detailed. That kind of stuff. You can always go home. And there's a different settings here. Vehicle settings, profile settings. that stuff so yeah it's fairly straightforward uh, using the system uh, once you get the hang of it there's there's quite a bit of stuff in there you don't have to go in and change everything if you don't want to you can just have the main tiles that you want the main shortcuts if you want any shortcuts you can uh, if you don't want any you can um, minimize that if you want or just have you know just the relevant ones that you want and make it and simplify it really well in the very beginning and then that way it's a very simple even simpler than what it is now uh, to use so yeah really well done system I think so there's the four-way flashers. Here's the climate control. So dual, zo dual zone. Um, you have the driver and the passenger. So you can adjust it right here. Right now they're synced, but you can adjust them separately. So you can see the, the numbers there. The fan speed's there in the center. Uh, so as I turn it to the left and right, you can see it get, has that, but also has this little uh, color dial as well. Uh, pretty cool, illuminated. Looks really nice here on the center. Shows the status of the fan speed and everything. And then there's the where you want the air to blow, the front and rear defrosters, uh, recirculate the air. There's a heated seat, which is a three-stage high, medium, and low, and off. Same for the passenger, three-stage. Now, as you adjust this, it also shows you on the screen there at the top as well. It shows you what's going on. So there's USB-C ports, two of them, 12-volt power supply, wireless charger, with a rubber uh, surface so the uh, the cell phone doesn't slide around on you and also these little bars here on the side it keeps it in place really well done I like Subaru <laughs> okay so there's the uh, the shifter let's go ahead and put it in reverse because the parking sensors activate and also this camera is even though it's not in the center it does a really good job of being able to see around the vehicle because uh, with this view specifically, this one is more of a linear view. This is what you'll see in most vehicles. This is a top-down view, you see directly behind the vehicle. But this wide view right here, you're actually able to see to the left and to the right of what's directly behind you. And if there's any cars coming, if you're backing out, backing out of a parking spot, you actually see the car around the other car. So it actually gives you a like a, a elbow view right here. It bends the light so you can see it. it, it it's excellent. I wish all vehicles were like this. It really gets you spoiled when you're used to the, when you get used to this backup camera view. Uh, the rear cross traffic alert as well. It can be activated or deactivated right there when this is in, when this is popped up. All right, there's neutral drive, pretty straightforward. Uh, so there's the cup holders, and they have little spring arms there. Hard plastic on the inside, fairly easy to clean and, and keep up with, durable. Uh, there's the drive modes. So it'll show you on both this screen and this screen what drive mode you're in. So that's Econ. Next one is Normal. I'm trying to show you both screens at the same time, but 
Basically, this one over here just shows a picture. So there's sport, and then individual, so you can customize it if you want. And then you can go in there and customize it on this screen if you want. So let's go ahead and customize it. So you have the powertrain, steering, engine sound, and uh, gauge. Engine sound, we can go to sport. Steering, sport is a stiffer feel. Powertrain, uh, you can have sport, econ, or whatever. And then uh, gauge, you can have the sport or the normal. So sport is basically just giving, it gives it like a red look, looking pretty cool. Go back to normal, and we'll go back there. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it in normal mode again. If we're in eco mode, then it's gonna give you a little bit better fuel economy. Not a huge amount, but it will diminish even your air conditioner, that kind of stuff. Electronic parking brake, when you lift it up, it engages the rear wheels, and it gives you a little indicator light there. Uh, to release it, you just press and hold the brake, and then push it down, and it releases it. It has a brake hold function where you it holds the brake for you when you come to a complete stop. So if you're just sitting at a traffic light or traffic jam or something and you want that to do that, you can, you, I'm not used to it, but uh, if you want it to hold the vehicle when you come to a complete stop, you can have that feature. It'll release it as soon as you hit the accelerator. So this armrest, very soft and comfortable, really like it. Um, and it lifts up and it's kind of spring loaded so it doesn't slap back down on you. Lifts up right there. And there's a little quick access little tray right here. It has this little Civic Easter egg on the back side, which they've had this for a while. It's not a 2025 thing. But, uh, but under that, there's actually two places. You can put it here or back there. And then there's a storage compartment in here. Nothing really fancy or anything, just a basic storage compartment. Uh, it does have a rubberized floor and then smooth, pla smooth plastic on the inside. So it's fairly easy to maintain. It's durable and all that those tend to get junked up. <laughs> okay, so it has the auto dim rear view mirror. It's actually auto dimming now because I have the shade over the light sensor and you can turn that feature on or off right here with that button. Uh, so you have quick reading lights here for the driver, the passenger. Uh, you can turn on all the interior lights with that button, all off, or have them open, turn on when you open up the door in that center position. Uh, this is for the center, we'll forget that in a second. It has roadside assistance a button right here. It's covered up with this little flap. Uh, this little you have a little green light right there as well. Um, at nighttime, that might be actually these lights right here. Let me go ahead and turn on the lights. Yeah, these little lights right here are like little ambient lights that shine in the center, give you like a little bit of a moonlight. Uh, this is just like a little finder light, I suppose. So up here is your sunglasses holder, and uh, it's felt it's like a like a foam material on this side. It's kind of grippy too. So uh, when you put yourself your 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 glass is in there. It's not going to slide around. It feels nice and grippy. Uh, there's, this is just a smooth plastic on this side, though. So the visor is a black cloth, just like the headliner. And it has a mirror with light. Uh, it does extend out. Covers most of the glass there on the side. Same thing on the other side there. Okay, so uh, the sunroof. It has a shade that blocks 100% of the light. You just slide it back, it's manual. Then you have this one touch button right here. So the one touch button, you pull it back to slide it back. Push it forward. And then you push up on it, on the button there to tilt it up. And then you push forward to close it. So looking at the visibility here in the back, um, it has that little window in that rear pillar which helps out a whole lot. Uh, but just overall, looking over my shoulder, looking out the back window, it's not really an issue at all as far as the visibility. Now it does have the parking sensors, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot detection system, backup camera, all kinds of technology to help you drive the vehicle safely. Uh, but yeah, it's not really a problem even just looking around. Not really a big deal. So there you have it. Uh, 2025 already. Hybrid Civic. Very interesting. Really impressive vehicle, especially for the price range. Um, uh, the Civic, you know, very competitive prices. The first two trims uh, are a non-hybrid, and then the upper two trims are a hybrid. So this is the highest trim that they make. 
Um, thank you to East Coast Honda here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for providing the vehicle. Their contact information will be in the description and I'll see you guys next time.